guys, today we're gonna talk about rock work and how to set up your aquascape. Um, right here we have some Carib Sea. This is artificial rock. Um, we're basically gonna show you guys how to set up your rock work for your specific application. Because if you're doing a fish only tank, you might wanna do things a little bit differently than if you're doing like a high flow Acropora SPS tank. Um, these rocks are really cool because they kind of come naturally in these sort of shelf or these uh, you know bent cave kind of configurations. And there's a lot of really interesting ways that you can fit them together to create really cool shapes like this. Um, this is kind of a, a far, far reach away from what used to be the norm in saltwater fish tanks was just a big wall of rock up against the back wall. And people got so used to that look for so long that we didn't really realize that there was other options. Over the past few years, minimalistic aquascape has become much more popular and uh, it's become much more interesting too because you get to see a lot of different takes on how to set up your tank. So you can see Jimmy's putting these rocks together, kind of trying to set them up to where there's lots of holes and caves and different spots for fish to duck in and out of and hide when they need to. Um, some of these come with pre-drilled holes in them as well. That makes sticking frag plugs in there nice and easy. You can kind of hide the plug. It looks nice and clean. You know they're not gonna you know, fall off. So this table we have right here is four foot long. A lot of tanks are four foot if you have like a traditional 55 gallon, 75, 60s. There's a lot of tank footprints that are four feet long. So it's kind of nice to be able to sit around and play on something like this rather than doing it in the tank. You know, you're not gonna beat up the tank or anything. Um, this is an example of an aquascape that would be great for like a high flow environment. Typically for like SPS or like high flow mixed reefs. I like to tell people to leave a little bit of space back here at the back of the tank. That way you can get flow going behind the rocks and all the way around your rock work. If you do the traditional, you know, wall stacked up against the back, you're more likely to have dead spots in the back of the tank where your flow doesn't completely get to. You guys can see that's the cool part about you know this artificial rock. Back in the day, all the rock that we use in our tanks was pulled straight from the ocean. With this stuff, they really can make shapes and figure out different things to do with it to kind of let you use your imagination more. We had like Pukani rock and a lot of like different styles of rock back in the day, but you were kind of limited as far as like what you could get, the shapes and things like that. This stuff, there's no limit to it. Whatever you can think up with your imagination, you can make it happen. It's also nice that it comes pre-stained. It's got a little bit of color on it already. You don't have to wait, you know, a year for the coral line to grow in. But then when the coral line does grow in on this, it just creates, you know, more colorful base to put your corals on. It's good when you're thinking about your rock too, to think about the type of tank that you're gonna have. Um, I always tell people, plan, plan, plan before you put things into action. You may wanna have, like I said, a high energy, high flow, high light reef tank that's catered more towards hard corals. You might wanna have more of a low energy reef that's more you know, for softies and LPS and that type of thing. That's gonna dictate a little bit what you wanna do with your rock work. Say you wanna do a full mixed reef, you can imagine that a lot of your more low flow corals can be down here. Say you have some gonies or some bubble coral, you can kind of put them here in between. They'll be protected from a lot of the flow. Meanwhile, you can put a lot of your acros and your hard corals up top with pumps blowing right at them. That way they can get the flow they need, but you set it up in a strategic way to where you can keep basically any type of coral. There's a zone in the tank that's desirable for that species. So all way different look. And you can see just playing around with the rocks here, like how many different looks you can create, how dynamic it is. It's, I mean, in my opinion, it's just superior to what we all used to do back in the day. It was like everybody had the same pile of rocks just stacked up against the back of their wall. This looks much more better. It's much more aesthetically pleasing. It also creates, you know, a better environment to have a healthy tank with water flow and you're making sure that, you know, water is getting to everywhere in the tank. There's no dead spots. I like this. Make me want to set up a tank just to put this in there. 
So we have this setup down here at the store. If you guys are looking to get a new tank, maybe you're looking to add some live rock, you can always come down here and play with it. Kind of get an idea for what you want to do maybe before you decide which pieces you want to take home with you. But yeah, again, as you can see, just endless possibilities with this stuff. All right, guys, that does it for this one. We appreciate you watching and supporting our content. Definitely come down and check out our Norco location if you're local and have not been here yet, or feel free to check out our online store. Definitely check us out on social media too. We're posting content to Instagram daily and we post updates on what's going on around here at the store. So it's a lot of fun. Definitely go check that out. We appreciate all your guys' support and we'll see you on the next one.